All right, welcome to a video tutorial. This one um, is going to be a little awkward. Um, we have the paper. I'm, I'm trying to orient it in the uh, portrait fashion. I was sent this photo by um, one of the members on um, my Patreon group, one of my supporters. And uh, she was asking about this photo and how I would go about painting it and whatnot. And looking at this photo, the, the first thing that obviously strikes is that it is in portrait orientation. So it's a little awkward trying to uh, get this table set up for that, especially in regards to filming. I had to push the tripod together and lift it up more. So hopefully you see most of the picture. You're really not missing much down here. Here's the clips, so you kind of get an idea. Um, so we're going to take an approach to this. We're going to use our Stonehenge Aqua. We are going to um, wet it and whatnot. And um, I'm thinking that we might take a little bit of a different approach. So. Let me get our colors out, um, give you time to look at it. This video will be a Patreon exclusive, so it will be only for y'all. And um, if we get her permission, I'll see if we can upload this uh, source material as well. So looking at it, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to rely a lot on uh, raw sienna. I'm just putting out some burnt sienna and whatnot, but I think we'll get some like super fresh raw sienna there. We have obviously the blues in the water. We're going to have to make a decision if we're just going to use ultramarine or um, if we're going to use the cerulean blue. It might be fun to play with that there. Though, cerulean blue right in this point I'm not sure if that'll play with the pushing and the pulling and the helping with the 3d effect so that's something we'll experiment with as well the sky itself when I first saw this picture I was almost thinking just just leave the paper white but I think we might do a light wash of um, either ultramarine or cerulean or maybe a little bit of lizard mixed into those I think that this one would also lend itself to using um, yellow ochre if you wanted to or some different umbers to play around just because it's uh, yeah, it's a fall scene. Even though I seem to paint a lot of fall scenes, I, I don't really have too much reference photos for it so this one is a really good one. So um, it's going to be a little awkward space wise with the way the clips and everything sit, but we'll put this over the side so I can look at it while we go at it. Um, I'll probably wind up deviating at some point from it and you know, kind of just taking you know, an artistic approach to it. That was another question that she had had was what to leave out, what to put in and whatnot. So, We'll go through that together. My brush, unfortunately, seems a little dirty from this morning's painting. So, we'll wet our paper. Whenever you tear a quarter sheet, uh, really keep in mind when you're painting portrait um, that you paint to the edges because you're definitely going to have uh, less coverage with a mat. A mat's going to come pretty close to that edge. So we'll put that down. Let's get a little bit of water going. A little bit of cerulean.
we're going to have to adjust our paper. Shedding. Cerulean. If you want, we do have like a bright spot on that side so we can lift and get some texture up in here. Now, the main thing is this large curvature that's taking place of the um, the bank. So I think that's going to be the biggest battle here. Let me kind of just put it in and think about it and where it flows. And how we approach this gradation, I think that's really going to affect how it sits forward and back. So Let's grab some ultramarine now. And then we'll grab some Payne's Gray. My paper is going to adjust, so let's let that happen. Payne's gray underneath the edge that I always talk about with water. And I'm trying not to do like a swoop. I want variety in this. More Payne's gray down here. could start putting in reflections, but I feel like we're going to play a lot with this water. I'm going to move away from that for a moment. I'm going to grab my raw sienna, and I'm looking at that far, far tree line. Uh, I'm thinking how we can tone raw sienna down. Let's mix ultramarine in there, see what happens, see if it grays it. I want it lighter in value. I usually go for um, the purples for that far background, but I feel like this is the way to go for it. So this was a mixture of ultramarine and raw sienna. It is going to play an importance along this edge of the raw sienna. We can get pure, cleaner raw sienna up here. We might mix it with um, some lemon yellow to see what we can get. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm not too adept with the raw sienna mixtures. That's something that I need to study up on and practice. There's like lemon yellow mixing into it. And the water catches some of these colors with that reflection. We may have to rely on the size of reflections to help create this to push back as well. So a variation of um, 
warm and cool colors, the size of the reflections, the value of the reflections, I think all those things are going to help. Hopefully you create that depth. So here is that mix. I have some of that lemon yellow on there still, unfortunately. Um, I can grab burnt umber to add variation back here. You can, if you'd like, take the rigor into this and add these and this is going to start creating that build up of um, our foliage. Right now this is just the far distance so it's just adding a little bit of texture to it. We'll wind up having shadows and reflections coming down. That's just kind of tickling. This isn't really too much purpose right there. Okay, I'm going to darken this mixture up, mix in a little bit of Payne's Gray. And this will be another layer in front. Though everything's still wet and wet, so I think this is going to diffuse quite a bit. So we may have to do this layer a second time. Some of these are going to come up further, and we're going to have to keep in mind that we want a lot going up to the top of that page. I want a little bit of water up there. I don't want that too. And you can vary this. These guys may start having influences on the reflection, so we may start bringing those down. You could also lighten up spaces between them by pulling. Burnt Umber, Ultramarine, or Grayish Blue. That's for these shadows down in here. just taking that same mixture kind of just putting in where shadows and darks are going to be in fact I can grab some of that Payne's gray and do what I talked about earlier where I really like that Payne's gray underneath that water edge or the yeah the shoreline edge uh, varied up so it's not a straight line Thicken it here so it's coming closer to us. In fact, darker here, closer to us. Even though right there that there's that prominent dark spot right here, we may have to, you know, put the idea like a little gentle touch, a little gentle touch to help these guys recede. So I believe that's uh, an area that you'd have to admit in order to allow this recession. Okay, now we could use the rigor or the hake, whatever you're comfortable with, to do another grouping of trees. Here, it looks as though 
there's a lot more separation in this layer. I'll switch to the rigger. Ultramarine blue, burnt, umber, Payne's gray. It's just easier to use the rigger right here for me because of the quantity of lines that I have to put in. If you want to take the time and use the hake, that's fine. You'll probably get more um, textures out of it. Like I said, there's a variation in grouping, so I'm going to put a rhythm here where You want with that mixture more on the paint's gray side, you can start putting in some of these reflections. Rather than putting them in a line, I should have been squiggling them a little bit. Squiggle and swiggle gives the, the ripple motion of the water. I'm going to concentrate this more as we get closer. I think throughout I'll try to leave the water region, like the actual this pond, as wet as I can for as long as I can to constantly put in these um, effects, the wet and wet effects. Even dry brush. Payne's gray and browns over this. And I do like that cerulean, that's the one that I had talked about, how it might pop it out too much. I'm just moving that around, getting texture. Okay, back to the tree line. I'm sure we're getting to the point where we have a decent dryness in there. So we can actually start yeah, we can. Good. So it's, it is wet, but um, with all the dabbing and whatnot, we seem to be drier up here to get that. We can really... Kind of really wash off of the take. Let's grab raw sienna, lemon yellow, and a 
texture it over. Remember we said the reflections were showing down here in the water, so we'll see if it catches. But right now it's wet, so it might not play nice. Then ultramarine burnt umber for a grayish blue for shadows. To kind of intersperse over this. So it's kind of feeding that into that wet paint that's there. Once again, grabbing some darks and going in again. And just building up that dark. There are some prominent dark reflections that'll happen. You can also scrape along this edge. Though we're not going to probably scrape this far back for grass. This is just to get textures. You can even dab right along that edge. And textures. And that'll help us come closer to pull that side up. All right, back to the rigger. Let's go, um, burnt sienna. You could use burnt umber. I'm just gonna mix it once again with um, the ultramarine for a dark. I'm gonna get like a purplish almost. And Payne's gray. So this is just a higher concentration of stuff. This is going to be our tree line starting here now. And these guys still don't have that much going on with them. As opposed to just coming from this region and coming up. You can see it's still wet down here. That's giving a pretty cool effect as if it has that shadow that's helping ground it. We can come off of these and give branches. We'll probably start thickening these guys as well. Um, so we'll do that. We'll start giving these guys some branches. Make sure you hit in the top of the page because with this size, like I said, cut. Um, I'm sorry, the side of the page is where it's going to be narrow with the mat. Grab the cut. Put that line in for the shadows. I'm enjoying that color, so I think I'm going to bring in a few more shadows. A few of these trees go off on tangents and have some weird uh, directions that they go in. So I think at this point, these guys will be visible enough to um, kind of add that weird tangent effect. So you can have fun with it. I'm really having fun with this painting. So um, this was from Miss Margaret. I, I didn't mention her name in the beginning. I just said it was from a patron, but I wanted to tell her directly at this point. Um, thank you for sharing this photo with me. Um, it's quite a challenge, but at uh, painting in the portrait orientation, but it's really, really enjoyable, um, this, this composition. It's um, something I would have shied away from, I think. It, but you know, sometimes you got to rise to the occasion. Um, 
we can still bring in this. Yeah, so we're still wet here for our shadows. I'm just going to dance this across the top. Let them start and end. I really don't want that guy to be so concentrated right there. We're here, but we might have to live with it. We can use the side for that textured effect if the area is dry. Doesn't seem like it's dry enough for that yet. Coming back in, darkening some of these up still. Let's see. So, yeah, that's that line. I think we have done enough with that one. If we want, we could probably play around with lemon yellow and feed that in back and forth and raw sienna into these things for variety in the ground. Um, and we'll do that as we go forward. The next one is going to be trees in this region. I'm just marking it just so you can see where I'm talking about. Let's go for it. Let's, um, let's switch it up. Burnt. Number, okay, we could also have scraped on some of these trees. It's not much, but it's something. Okay. Ultramarine and burnt umber. Seems to be a more favorite combination of mine with you know, the little darkening around the panes gray. So we're coming from down here now. We're going to get thicker with them. Um, once again, you can use the hake at this point or you can use the rigor. Either one is fine. Um, we just have to be careful of it melding at that spot. We switch to the So far we have done no dry off whatsoever. Some areas did dry a little bit with the um, padding of the paper towel. So we're working at a pretty fast pace, I think. I don't even know what clue how much time has gone by for this. All right, so this is that lower line. Add a little bit more emotion to these guys. We're going to add texture down by them. I feel that this guy leading off to the side was just a really important element. That's why I put a sh uh, reflection there so often. Trying not to follow the path of those other trees that I put in. Dry brush. Okay. On these trees, we're going to have branches. This guy actually has some foliage come off of him. 
Yeah, yeah, I had a hair on the end of that. So now you can kind of really start playing around and adding layers. This is just adding that density to this forest. In hindsight, looking at it at this point, the far yellow ochre we put in, yellow Rossian we put in the beginning, could have only put it up to here to get more of that blue sky back there. So you can play around with that height. And then this layer, we'll do some scraping. So this scene is essentially building up the tree layers while constantly playing with that wet and wet effect in the um, the water while paying attention to our recession in perspective. You could even take the rigor to draw those shapes in and get those ideas in. We do have some foliage in this stage, so let's um, scrape first and then we'll do what we can foliage wise. I'm scraping along trunks and I'm actually just scraping up give just the idea of different growth. Foliage right in here. It's receded back, so it's gonna be more on the blue side rather than green. Ultramarine, let's do lemon yellow. I don't usually mix a green, but we'll do it. We'll mix a little bit of burnt Sienna to tone it down. Now it's all already all crazy. So that's the foliage back there. We don't have much foliage looking down into this scene in this area, but we could put some in there if you want. We are going to quite cover up quite a bit with this um, prominent tree and this other one coming off the side. So we'll um, we'll just put this in just so that the idea is back there, and then we'll see how it affects it at the end. Take the rigor, ultramarine, burnt umber, you know, and put branches amongst these. Okay, now we have a layer here of just smaller trees and then we have this big prominent one. Let's dry it off. We'll put the big prominent tree in and we can put other stuff in around it as needed. And um, we'll, we'll see. So we'll do a dry off. Um, I don't know if I really wanna mess with the water too much anymore. We might put some blues in some spots. In fact, why don't we do that now? Let's do ultramarine. Just put some pure pigments in and just to pop those areas forward and see how it affects it. I'm using the side of the rigger. <clears throat> you can squiggle up on top like this for another far distant. Okay, so if you're wearing earbuds, watch out, we got a dry off coming.
we should be good with that uh, mixture of the burnt umber with ultramarine again right in here uh, I don't want to follow the path of these trees too much it has this shadow here so get right from the edge I'm using the hake to really give this guy texture but I'm gonna scrape and swipe and whatnot as well So it comes up like that. I'm going to help him sit. I'm going to use the same dark mixture to build up that area that I harped upon. Build up its reflection. Build up that dry brush. Okay, scrape. This is like the lightest part on the picture, so let's see. We may have to use the razor here. In fact, I have the razor right here, so. Yeah, there we go. Now, if you use the razor, you know, obviously be careful. I'm just using the corner edge to kind of scrape it out. It does scrape better if the area is dry, and this is not, since we just put it in. We can come back and do that. I think some people use pin knives as well. Um, I don't think I've really used that. I don't know how well that works. Okay. We'll mess around with that more in a bit, but let's darken its backside. I can come in onto the tree at points. I even try to grab some more pure pigment. This is burnt uh, umber here. And grab raw sienna. Even though it is not raw sienna in the picture, since we are painting in like an expressionist, impressionist style, we can do what we want. And like I said, we'll probably use that razor once this dries to go better at it. Um, also to help lighten that, I could take a dark, I'm trying to clean that off, there we go, blue or something and put more shadow right behind it and that shadow next to it we'll see if that helps that white come out more that's um kind of the concept of counter change in some areas i don't know if you have um any white paint so i don't th i think i'll use any of that on this painting I could pull some of this up. Now, we got to do all the little branches coming off of this guy. Um, very, well, there's one that's coming off the ground too that I talked about in this layer. So we can do those, like I said, as well as the branches. And that's something I enjoy, putting those little trees like this down around it. Here, I'm not sure which branches are coming from this tree and which branches are coming from the bush to our the, the photo photographer's immediate left, but it's it's okay. Like you, you we're not doing a picture perfect scene and we're having fun with it. It is good to look at this um picture and kind of see all the different lightning bolt shapes that they kind of make and how they come out parallel uh, perpendicular to the tree and then they come down low that's uh, pretty interesting 
I don't usually do my branches like that, and this is going to help me add to my repertoire. And we're going to have tree branches on this other side, but they're going to be hidden by that front bush. However, I think it's really important that we put those in because of the density of that front bush. It's really not that big, and I don't want too much of this to show through. I don't want to, because we've been leaving this area alone, it feels kind of empty, so I want to just be very careful. And as I say that, I go to a different spot. I apologize. It's just more just Payne's Gray. All right. What I did right here, this is actually adding stuff that isn't in the scene. And um, I'm kind of just discovering this on the spot where I'm putting in a tree, a small twig, and adding a little line to it as if it's casting a shadow. And this is creating just an immense um, sense of depth right in there. So, and if we go hardcore right in here, with this guy's shadow, that'll help us. He does have a shadow in this picture, yeah, so that's the direction everything's going, and that's that's what it is. And that's creating the depth. So that seems to be very important. Where I was putting the shadow on this backside, but I wasn't paying attention to too much shadow on the ground. I was putting in the colors for the shadow earlier when we put in the blue and the um, moss sienna, but I wasn't doing that. And that's helping us create depth as well. having so much fun with this one and learning so much in the process um, and that's this is this is a lot of fun I'm kind of tempted to almost put the bush right in here and not let it overhang so much into our main picture but we'll have to see I think we'll have to do a dry off here there are some white uh, branches from like dead trees and catching that light perfectly we may have to scrape that out so here's a dry off
let's see. Yeah, so we'll get, oh, there we go. You're going to pull up a lot of paper here. Just be careful. Um, I mean, you know, the paper's pretty thick, so just don't cut yourself. And, all right, let's take the chance. Wish it wasn't so um, dotted right here with that scrape. It may be because I'm looking so close that I'm noticing it. I'm not sure if somebody far away would notice it. Let's pull it like that. That's literally cutting into the paper. We had to put a lot of pigment right there. So we got some interesting scrapes. Um, you could scrape in the water too. Got a little bit of that. I don't want to go overboard with that. Or do I? Hmm. This is, okay, so edge pull, we are getting the dotted texture. The cut pull, you're gonna get a thin line. You are cutting into the paper, so don't push too hard. I'm not sure how far we're going through it, but it's giving us a good effect. I find um, you're gonna have to play around with this to see if you to get the perfect um, touch with it. I might have to do a video just on what I'm experimenting with right now. Okay, now it's time for this foliage here. Now. This is gonna be a combination of branches and foliage. So let's ultra green blue. And you could experiment with um like the phthalo blue here if you wanted to. Um I don't think I'm gonna use phthalo blue right now, but to get that darker dark and help it pop forward. This is just that same mixture I'm using over and over again of that ultramarine, Payne's gray, and um, burnt umber. And the reason I'm using it is just to get it dark. I just want it to lay on top of these. We gotta hug really tight to that edge due to matting reasons. I'm putting this branch, uh, this object in the picture itself. It looks like it was coming off the edge, but I kind of needed to put it here. I'm gonna put a shadow, I'm gonna let it sit. Um, if it looks awkward, it's gonna dry and fit in. We can cross over our other tree because this guy is closer to us. I am having so much fun with this one.
and I could bring them off this right down here but I think for this whole picture I think I'm going to admit that I think that's the um, artistic license I'm going to apply to this but if you wanted to you can keep bringing it forward and then it would have it over in this direction we do have a lot of greens taking place in here yellowish greens so let's do a dry off of these and we'll come over them with some uh, branches and foliage I should have just sprayed it with my bottle. Um, mix it or dark into it. This is raw sienna with that dark, a little too raw sienna, not enough dark. Let's um, grab some raw sienna. Let's try this off and let's take a look at the big picture. get that lemony yellow green so let's just try taking that rigor and stippling in some so we could catch that light So we're just stippling in. Could scrape and then use the razor but as we learned we really need it to be dry let's do another dry off
So we have so much essentially caked and piled on here that we are going to have some issues. I'm just getting bright in here, letting loose. I think that we may be nearing the end as far as I'm wanting to push this one today. Um, let's see if there's any other rigor stuff we want to do. You um, can obviously take this further if you want. If you're following along. Let's dry this. I'm going to put this on the side. So here's the original photo. We'll put this right here. I'm dropping stuff. And then we'll put the mat and we'll sign it. I have the uh, the Kindle's charging. We will lay that right on top because I'm gonna dry it some more after I turn off this film. But there you go. There's the finished product. I hope you all enjoyed. Have a great day.